Wayne Taylor, how are you? Great to see you again, Carl. How are you? Wayne, it's so good to see you. The last time we were on stage together was in Maiden, North Carolina. Oh, and that? and that was the bluegrass festival I had going that's on. Right. I that believe. was the first time we were on stage. Yes, sir, it was. Wow, that's been some years ago. That's uh, your 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 history with music and your traditions go back a long ways, don't they? Well, I I started when I was nine years old uh, plunking on a guitar and been been at it ever since. <laughs> what was your inspiration? Who were the who were the musicians that Wayne loved to listen to? Well, my older brother played bass in a group called The Initials. Okay. And I was about in the sixth grade. And I heard them play. He played a song for me over the telephone. He played Walk, Don't Run by The Ventures. That is the coolest thing I ever heard. And I just, from that moment on, I have to be able to do that. And it wasn't, but a few months after that, he showed me a few chords on the guitar, and I was their rhythm player. So I played in a little group wow. called The Initials. So, so you, you not only heard the song, but you started playing it right away? Well, I was really hungry to, to get good at it. You know, it, I was just really wanted to play, play music. Well, what, what was your inspiration? I mean, I understand your, your mom and dad and their interests, but you said you wanted to get good. Did you, did you want to see yourself on stage? Was that the idea? I always thought, you know, if I keep doing this for another year, I'll be a lot better than I am now. So I, I, I always look at it in long, long-term goals. Right. And I thought, well, I'm, I'm gonna keep after this because it came to me quickly. Right. Other things didn't come to me that quickly, like so schoolwork. So it was kind of a natural thing for it you. It was. I, right. I felt it was just a natural way, a natural path for me to go down that I felt comfortable with and I felt like I could succeed. Tell me about your, uh, your experience with the military because it wasn't a minor experience, was it? Well, uh, I had a friend named David Parker. He took me to see Lester Flat when I was about 18 and up in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, and I thought, man, that Lester Flat, that, that's the real deal there. So I started getting into bluegrass. They had Marty Stewart playing with him. Marty was 13 years old at that time. Wow. So that was your first experience with what one could say incredible bluegrass music. Right, very good, top of the line bluegrass. And little Marty was so good. He was a lot better than I was, and I was 18, and he was like 13. I said, man, I'm gonna have to get busy. But we started a bluegrass band and we went for a couple years and then uh, I saw that we were, we were not going to become famous. So I said, I think I want to see the world. So I joined the Navy. I went to the recruiter and I said, I want to go to the West Coast. I want to be in aviation. They gave me those two things, they guaranteed. So I went off to uh, San Francisco to firefighting school after uh, boot camp and went to Midway Island. I was there for 16 months and found an old guitar there and started playing and I started a band and we played in all the EM club and the chief's club and the officer's clubs on the island. The island is one mile by two miles. Wow, so, so that was your first musical exposure in the military? Well, it was, but then I thought military bands only had the horns that marched down the streets because that's all I ever saw. But they had a band from Hawaii that came over and they played James Taylor, Cat Stevens, rock music, country music, and I knew all those songs. Right up your alley. Yeah, and they said, why don't you play with us? So I, I jammed with them a little bit and they said, you know, you're good enough to be a Navy musician. I said, well, I'd much rather do that than be here on this little island. They, they just took me on the merit that I could sing and play guitar, and they thought I'd look good in front of their band, so that's where they put me. I was in a rock band over in Japan for two years. I was a lead singer and lead guitar player, and we had a horn section, and we played everything. This is 1976, oh, so we had some disco. Too. We did disco. They gave me a wah-wah pedal, you know, one of those, and a Les Paul, black Les Paul custom, just a beautiful guitar. Wow nice amplifier and I was ready. Yeah. You had a big budget behind you finally. I did <laughs> and then I said well do well, you think you fellas could get me a banjo? So they, they bought me a Gibson Mastertone banjo and I took that thing over there and I started working like crazy so we, we put bluegrass in the show. How was that, how was that received? Oh they loved it, they loved it. Japanese they love some bluegrass and they love country. You, you obviously 
uh, travel the world then, right? I sure did, yes. President Bush liked us quite a bit. He took us to Beijing, China with him and actually sang uh, God Bless the USA for his retirement. Nice, nice. It's quite an honor. How long were you in the, in the military band? I was there for two years and it was 1978 and I decided to get out. Scooted over to the University of Pacific, which is a very nice university, uh, conservatory of music there. So I wound up learning. I did. I, I was really hungry for it. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wound up with a bachelor's degree in music and studied music therapy. So you're out of the military. You, you've now gone to, got your education, mm -hmm. further yes, your education. Sir. Then what happens? Well, we, we moved back to North Carolina and I was looking for a music therapy job. And a fellow came up and he said, you know, they're looking for a counselor at the prison camp in Newton, North Carolina. And I said, well, I think I'll try that. So I did that for three years. And they made a probation officer after, after they discontinued the program that I was teaching. I had 150 people on my caseload. I thought, man, I wonder what they're doing in the Navy. <laughs> so I went back to the recruiter. And now, back in 1978, they said, what can we do to keep you in? I said, I want to go to Washington and play with Bill Emerson. Mm. I knew Bill, uh, his fame as a banjo player. And they said, well, 78, they said, we can't put you in there because we have Jerry Gilmore in there and he's the lead singer. So he's got a long way to go. So eight years later, when I went knocking on the door to the Navy. There was an opening. There was an opening there in Washington, D.C. Just so happened all the stars lined up. They sent me a some music, they said, do these six songs, put them on a cassette and send them to us. So I, I did that and then they said, well, come up and do a formal audition. I went up there and auditioned and I saw the lieutenant pass a piece of paper to the other guy and said, there's a man we want right there. So I stayed with that country current in Washington, D.C. for 21 years. So you were back in for the long haul. I was, I wanted that, I wanted that so bad. So what, uh, what took you out of the military? Well. I became an E9, and I still felt pretty healthy. So I wanted to have some time on my own, you know. Where, I mean, you're owned by the, by the government, you know, when you're in there and you do what, what they tell you. I just felt it was time for me to get out on my own and see what I can do. So you formed a group, Wayne Taylor uh, and Appaloosa, right? I did. Uh, I got in touch with an old friend, Emery Lester, who is uh, world-class mandolin player. So Emery and I started that band up and we went to Scotland and Holland and we, we got to do some really cool things. We play out in California, um, Lake Havasu. So you, you were doing the national and international mm -hmm. Right, and we still do. I still have the group Appaloosa. And my old Navy buddy, Keith Arneson, who was in Country Current with me for 15 years, so he's in my group now with Appaloosa. So you've got uh, you've got some some uh, some of the folks that you grew up with in the military. That's right. Who, who you're still growing up with. Right, we're family. Yeah. You know, it's all family. Tell me about uh, some of your new adventures. I because I look at your body of work and it's not like you actually quit doing things. You just add more things to it. I right? do. I do. I I was in the. I was over at a fella's house and I started singing harmony with Marshall Sipe and Ronnie Black, both of them local guys. I, I've known them a long time. And we sat down and sang some harmony and we said, wow, man, this is good. And after a while I said, I'm going to start a country band. I love old country. You know, I grew up with Merle and George and all of them and Hank Williams. And, and I tried to do that with the Navy. I tried to get them to play all old stuff, but you know, we wanted a more contemporary thing going on as well. But yeah, I wanted a group that where I could just play what I wanted to and the artists that I love. And so we came up with Wayne Taylor's Great American Country Band. Wow, so that's been doing well for you. So you, you not only are uh, do, doing well with your own voice, but you've got a lovely lady with you now. Oh, Courtney Basil, she's wonderful. I've known Courtney for a little while. and She's out at Denver United Methodist Church and helps the children there. That's her day job. Right. But uh, every Tuesday we get together and we, we practice hard. So she, she's singing country music now. Well, I've heard her and she sounds fantastic. She is. So who else is in the group? Well, we have Marshall Sipe on keyboard. We have Ronnie Black on guitar. Our drummer is Greg Simmons from Newton. 
steel guitar, we have Brian Hudson and uh, then Courtney and myself. So it's a good size band. And, and we have Billy Rose on the bass. I can't forget Billy. All right, so you've got a, you've got a, good, uh, you've got a good team of people. Tell me, Wayne, about, uh, tell me about Carnegie tradition. Well, like I said, I'm a big Lester Flat fan. Now, when I did my show, the first show we did at Maiden Elementary School, and we packed the house, and we had a local band come up and play, Cosmic Cowboys, good friends of mine. They did a great job. But Warren Yates and Donnie Little, I've been playing bluegrass with them every Tuesday, uh, early in the day, and then that night I play with the country band. But uh, Warren says, man, we need to do this Carnegie thing. We can do the 1962 performance of Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs at Carnegie Hall in New York. I said, great idea. So we got together and started working on it. I went and bought me a little hat, <laughs> a little tie. Yeah. I feel like I'm Lester Flatt. And Donnie says he feels the same thing. He said sometimes when you're doing their music and the way they did it, you know, they gather around the right. one microphone and you hear it and you start thinking, man, we're getting it. So, so, you're, so you actually feel like you do. this yeah. legend that you're portraying. When I see him up there, the way I used to see him, right. the way he'd play and he'd cock his hat back, you know, sideways. Right. Yes, I mean, I actually feel, I, uh, you know, Donnie called me Lester. Yeah. I call him Earl. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're definitely a traveler, so the idea of going to Carnegie Hall in New York City would not be foreign <laughs> to you. And now you're embodying uh, these incredible, incredible musicians from our past. Two musicians that Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, without a doubt, were some of the most beloved musicians of all time. Oh, they were. I mean, they, they were the first Elvis, weren't they? Yeah, you see them on Beverly Hillbillies yeah. doing those little skits and things, but people love that. Yeah. They just love it. And, but we love, I love Salty Dog Blues. I, lo I love the up-tempo things. I love to hear Donnie play the banjo. I could just sit there and listen to him all day. You see, that guy, when he was five years old, he was on stage at NC State University. He played with the uh, same program with Mother Maybell Carter. Wow, so that's, and that's, that's the another legend. That's the beginning of our country music right there, that Carter family. So he's, he's part of that group? He is, he's linked as they say. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Wayne, I'm looking forward to hearing some of the music. There's going to be a full house of people here tonight uh, at the Don Gibson Theater in <laughs> Shelby, North Carolina. You give tribute to Don, right? I do. I've always, I'll tell you what, I've recorded Don and sung his songs with Country Current through the years. Oh, lonesome me. I've done that one everywhere. And uh, yeah, it's just an honor to, uh, to honor him, you know, pay tribute to the greats. Well, we're we're in his house now, so it's going to be it's going to be a good night. Wayne, thank you so much. Thank it's always great to, to be with you, to share the stage with you. To, to you're an incredibly talented person, and you surround yourself with amazing musicians. Well, and, and uh, that shows. thank you so much. I feel blessed. Thank you, sir.